Hello, colleagues. As urologists, we are aware that urinary incontinence is a huge burden for our patients. It's also a huge cause of chronic disability, and it's predicted to be more prevalent than hypertension by 2050. I'm delighted to, that we're here to discuss an exciting new initiative, a collaborative initiative between a number of key stakeholders and how to raise awareness of urinary incontinence with also the key stakeholders, patients, clinicians, and policymakers. So I have a distinguished panel here today. I'd like to, first of all, introduce Pedro Blasco de Hernandez, who is president of CNUC. He's a urologist in Seville. He's chair, chair, chief of urology in Seville in Spain. I have Mary Lynn Van Polkvist, who has pioneered patient advocacy for urinary incontinence for more than 30 years, Lynn and is, of course, the leader of the World Federation of International of Incontinence and Pelvic Problems. And finally, Professor Philip van Kerbroek, who is a, has also pioneered urinary incontinence for many years and has been a chairman of, is currently chairman of the AU History Office and vice chairman of the AU Policy Office. So you're all very welcome. Pedro, I'd like to start with you, if you don't mind. Why d is, did you feel, you, uh, Sinuk pioneered the idea of patient engagement for many years. Why did you feel that it was necessary to form a collaboration between the patient group, WFIPP, and three international organizations, namely CNUG, the AU, and the International Concert Society? What were the reasons for developing this concept? Well, that, that's a, a long story. I'll try to, to make it short. It began in 2017. In 2017, we, we were working in trying to, to, to improve the lack of evidence to overactive bladder patients. Uh, we discovered that we needed more tools, making it short, in order to perform, to, to improve that evidence, not only with knowledge, not only with classic knowledge, we needed to develop soft skills, communications, uh, treating, uh, be, being closing and caring our patients. So that led us in 2020, 2018 and 2018 to began to work with the hand to hand with patients. Even in, in 2019, we had our first workshop, including patients as teachers, uh, in order to, to perform, to, to improve uh, the quality of, of the soft skills. We are ambitious and, and we now, this, and we are convinced that this is, should be the model. So I, we are convinced we have to change the model of assistances. So reasons for working together, reasons for working together are synergies. We can improve synergies between so, uh, uh, scientific societies. We have been usually, we are usual to, to, to work together, but we have to work including patients at the third level patient association, so that's what the first reason, synergies, be ambitious to, to change the assistance model to work in value. We need to work in value. At working in value means changing way of thinking of assistance people, of care people, politicians, or, or kind of persons involved in, in incontinence. Mm. I think if I had to, to resume the 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 way we, or the reasons for uh, is creating or stimulating for this is that working together for changing the model of assistance, for including value in our way of working that needed uh, new education, information for the patients, with the patients. We were working for patients. Now we are working with patients. and We are pretty sure all together we will reach long ahead yes so the key uh, you've outlined i mean i think it's fair to say that the old m ways of trying to raise awareness uh haven't worked and this is a new initiative to try and cr first of all change the way we do business and create uh, re-emphasize create new awareness and a new way of doing business but the three pillars i think of the collaborative model are you outlined are education information and lobbying pub public health systems as terms of policy. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that fair? Yes. Yeah. I think these are the th three legs of the chair. Okay. Very good. Um, Lynn, uh, Pedro has outlined 
the importance of soft skills. And soft skills, one of the key soft skills is developing shared decision making. And could you please tell our audience why is shared decision making between the patient and the physician so important? Well, I think, first of all, Pedro outlined it very well, that we're now working with patients and not for patients. Patients, as we know, certainly in the last few years, have become an all-important aspect of the health uh, context. Healthcare has changed also. And I think also, if we look at the way the pandemic has changed views, it sort of gathered pace very quickly. And there are many uh, younger people now who are almost demanding a different way of thinking. In other words, they want to be included in their own self-management, in their own care. And this, we know it's a very sort of topical, highly used term, this shared decision-making. It is when you're deciding on a treatment, long gone are the days when doctor knows best and the patient says yes or no. Now you actually look at the treatment options, what treatment options are there and how can you as the doctor, that's your responsibility to offer those treatment options, but equally the responsibility on the patient and the family, I would say, or carers, is that you actually contribute towards that treatment and in the end get a far better deal, a better product, probably more cost effective as well because we know that the constraints on healthcare across the globe are immense and they're increasing. So it makes sense, mm. shared decision making. Not only are you master of your own health, you know what's happening, you know what's going on, uh, which benefits you as a person, looking at you holistically. But again, it makes sense in terms of cost. So I think the mere fact that we're sitting here together, for me, is a triumph and the culmination of years of hard work by clinicians, by all the allied professionals, and by the patient community, the very robust communities there are in bringing this idea of shared decision making. Yeah. And I, I think it's, there's evidence, quite a bit of evidence now that patients are demanding self-management of their condition. Uh, they don't want to be queuing up for months to get into a hospital. They want to manage their condition at all. And they were now working to partner with the physician in a way that reflects the patient's values. That, that I think, is the key element of shared decision-making. I, I agree. I think this idea of partnership, it is a partnership. Mm. You enter into a partnership as soon as you have the notion of a treatment. That has to be discussed and looked at equally. And this is where the communication skills come in. We know there are constraints on time. We know there are per personnel shortages and so on and so forth. So you have to go into this uh, roadmap to treatment as an equal in a partnership. And I think we're getting there. It was slow to get off the ground, but I think we've made such progress mm -hmm. in the last couple of years. And I can only applaud it and long may it continue. Okay, thank you. Philip. Again, uh, you, I think, have been treat you regarded and you've always been vocal about urine incontinence as a disability. And I think you would be one of the first people to emphasize that point. And it is a disability and it's often forgotten. You have developed a very, we've heard today from you that you've developed a very robust policy to lobby the key, one of the key stakeholders, the policy makers you know, the healthcare systems. Uh, and could you outline this policy and the challenges you see in implementing it? Well, we have to realize that the EAU is a very strong organization into the medical aspects of our profession. And that deals with how doctors and patients have possibilities in engaging 
to their common goal, which is amelioration of their condition or their disability or curing them. Now, when we take these two continents problems, we are very strong indeed in delivering these medical aspects and patients can have profit of that. But both patients and doctors live and work in a larger environment that is not controlled by patients, that is not controlled by doctors even, that is not always controlled by hospital administrations, but that are very important and impact on what patients can have as access to care, the type of care, or sometimes simple things as access to toileting facilities that for patients with continence problems is very important. So the executive of the EU realized that it was very important to pay attention to this. And there is a policy office that was quite successful in putting oncological problems on the European map. And uh, they asked me to make a program to put also non-oncological problems on the European map. And we took continence health as a first topic for that endeavor. So we're currently working on a strategic plan, indeed, to bring the awareness of these problems to the European policy makers. It's a very important uh, time because next year there will be European elections. And so programs uh, that will be used in the campaigns of the European politicians will be established in the coming year. And so it's important that we bring continents held on this European map with the plan that we are elaborating at this moment trying to indeed raise the awareness and based on that have, I would say, an umbrella of different aspects related to continence care that will be of benefit for patients and also for caregivers. The point is that you have the European organization, you have also the national organization, so it will be a big task indeed to match these elements mm -hmm. in the preparatory work, but also once we have this on the European map, in the further elaboration and the implementation. You, you recently, your office, and you, you uh, identified a potential source of funding. Uh, could you like to tell us about that? Well, uh, the, the EU is uh, very much uh, pro uh, putting this on the European uh, policy map. And so the sponsoring of the EU is very important. We know that also the industry is very interested. But for the time being, uh, in order to develop this strategic plan, we want to be independent. So it will depend largely on the European Association of Urology. The benefit of their members, which is very important, which are the doctors, and as uh, consequence also uh, the profit of the patients. Mm -hmm. But you, you, you've, uh, I think you successfully identified a, a possible funding source from the EU. Your office recently, you, you know, the a strategy you developed a strategy to get funding, isn't that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, could absolutely. you tell us about that? The, the, the well, the, the details have not been established, so there is some confidentiality. Uh, I see. Okay, I beg so then I understand. Great. I understand that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, anybody else like to make some final comments, Pedro? Together we will go further. Uh, just that I'm absolutely delighted that we now have this new initiative, this commitment to collaboration in continence care, the four C's. I think it's a massive step forward. Okay. Thank you, Philip. Well, that in preparing this, it's obvious that so many organizations are very positive about uh, this initiative also to reach out to uh, policymakers. We have the support not only from medical organizations, as of course, obviously the EAU, but also the International Continent Society, and a large positive response from different patient organizations, not at least the World Federation of Incontinence, but also other patient organizations, to name specifically the organizations that deal with patients with uh, urological and non-urological cancers, uh, which is definitely an important and somewhat neglected group of uh, patients. Thank you, Philip. Well, we'll finish on that. This is a journey that began in Madrid at the, in November 2022. It has evolved, taken a significant step during the EAU Congress. And these are the early days, uh, but we look forward to, as Lynn said, uh, getting some getting incontinence highlighted, create awareness, and also getting proper funding for the right place, the right person, and the right time for our patients. Thank you. <laughs>